unwillingness to respond rightly to an offense may prove that we were never in it for the relationship itself, but rather for what we could get out of it instead. Say, Pastor, what do you mean? When we can't get out of our relationship what we want, we become offended. In other words, what you're saying was, I came into this for me. And for what you could do for me. And when I'm not getting anything out of this, and you're not doing anything for me, then I become offended. And I'll take my ball and go play somewhere else. Marriages end that way. Well, I came for you to take care of me. I came to this house for what it could do for me. I, I, I came to sit under your ministry for what you could do for me. Do you know that that's absolutely polar opposite of the very reason that you ought to be in any house of God or among any group of people? If you don't come in to serve, you're a problem already when you come in the door. Told you I was going to make you mad or glad before you walk out of here this morning. So it is all about you. How many times have I said, it's not about us. Amen, Pastor, amen. But then, then when you can't get what you want the way you want it, well, I'm offended. I'm sorry you're offended. I'm not going to be a smart aleck with that. I am deeply sorry that you're offended. But some things I can't fix. If I could, I'd go inside your head and your heart and I'd dial switches. This one needs to go this way. This Humility needs to go way up. Pride needs to go way down. The desire to be served needs to be turned down with. I'm a servant of others. I'm a towel, I'm a towel, I'm a towel user rather than the one sitting on the throne. Well, I just can't find my place. I'm, I'm, I'm just so offended I can't find my place. You know something? After I've asked you to do three or four different things and you've turned me down, what is your place? Hmm? I gave you 14 things to do and you didn't accomplish one of them? Not one? And you're mad at me? I know. I know. I know. Would you believe after doing this 30 years, I halfway know what I'm doing by the grace of God in building a church? Hmm? Would you think it? I just had... I mean... I mean, I, 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 know, I know how to, to get to the point of almost being a megachurch. I, 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 know, I know how to organize. I know how to put things together. I know how to build a Taj Mahal and get it done. But I've been thinking back, what, what, what was the key to that? What, what was the key to that? The key was developing a small group of servants who were committed to nothing but the cause. And who could not be offended out or offended in because we were all sold out. And the reason the former continues to go is because that group of sold out is still there. Thank God my plan worked. I work myself out of a job. You're crazy if you want this job. 
you got to be crazy or called. One or the other. And I think that's why God looks for crazy people when He calls them. Some folks are simply rebellious and continually offended by any type of authority exercised in their lives. I'm going to end the pain in a minute. There's just a couple of more. They become offended when anyone speaks an authoritative word to them. Once the devil can stir rebellion in us so that we become angry at the truth spoken to us, we're in deep trouble. I'm serious. We're in deep trouble. If you can't receive truth, you'll never be free. The desert's a hot, lonely place of continual frustration and defeat. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. If you won't let anybody speak truth to you, if you won't receive the truth and put it into practice, you will never be free. You can quote it till you are blue in the face. You can confess it over every situation in your life. Well, bless God. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And you're as offended as you can be. You are angry as you can be. You are embittered as you can be. And you are just, you're, you're looking, you're trying to get them to see the truth when God says, if you receive the truth. These folks are simply walk, there, there are folks that are simply walking magnets, walking offense magnets because of past seasons of rejection, hurt, and wounds that they have never dealt with properly. So the string of past offenses gets transferred to others. I hope you're still awake because I'm just I'm in the meat now. I hope you stay with me. Let me say this as lovingly as I can. I cannot apologize for what others have done to you, only what I'm responsible for. And yet an offended person, a person who is easily offended, the offenses keep piling up. That means the hurt and the pain and the rejection Keep building up. These are real. These hurt. These are real. I'm not saying these aren't real. I'm just trying to help us deal with these things. But if we don't deal with these offenses by handling them properly, eye to eye confrontation if necessary, meeting the brother or sister in the middle, at least forgiving and releasing, then that offense just keeps building up. And if the enemy knows he can entrap you in a one offense, two's going to be better. Three's going to be better. If he's found out he can get you hung up, if one person has got you offended and he's got you hung up on one person, then you better look out because there's another one coming down the road that's going to be number two and there's another one coming down the road that's going to be number three. And I know people that live much of their lives continually offended by everyone who comes into their life and they can't figure out, well, I wonder why I'm always offended and people are hurting me all the time. Wake up, stupid! Only you can close that door. Only you can close that door. You have to respond right. Unless we are willing to keep the slate clean through forgiveness, all the pent-up offense from the past will follow us into our futures and on to others who do not deserve our wrath. You ever had anyone blow up on you after you just ask a simple question? <laughs> Why did that happen? They really weren't mad at you at all. You just asked a question or you said something that sparked the offense. That was of the offense. That was of the offense. 
and you got regurgitated on. The slate has to be wiped clean every time. Paul said, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Get rid of it because tomorrow's a new day. Well, Pastor, you just don't know what I've been through. It's true. I don't know what some of you have been through. But I know the hell I've been through. And I know the same words that Jesus said to me are the same words that He says to you. How many times do we forgive? Seven times? Seven times 70. And Jesus didn't mean keep count to 144 or whatever. Seven, 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 490 times. What He meant was you just keep forgiving. You don't keep being foolish. Somehow we've got the idea in the church that to forgive means to keep being foolish with people. I can forgive you, but I don't have to be foolish with you anymore. <laughs> You're forgiven, but you ain't coming back in my circle. Pastor. No, 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 no. Well, you can't really let... Yes, I can. I can cry over people. I've done it. But once you've taken me down that road of offense more than two or three times and... You haven't learned your lesson. I am not codependent. I don't need you to make me feel good. Me and Jesus, Jesus makes me feel good, real good. Y'all are having too much fun up here in the front. I'm just, you want me to preach like I used to preach. I'm waiting on Pastor to get his fire back. I'm waiting to get strong again. Pastor, I'm, I'm waiting for you to get healed up. Well, guess what? I know you like How you like me now? <laughs> I actually told someone the other day. I'm either going to ignite a move of God by preaching the word as strong as I can. Or I'll be the last one out the door that locks it. And turns the key back in. But there ain't nobody going to run me out of town preaching the word but God. Amen. It ain't going to happen. It, this is His house. Last thing. <laughs> Jesus. I did. Woo! Heaven help me. Lord, I prayed to hide me behind the cross. Not nailed to it, Lord, just behind it. you already been nailed to it. All right, we'll be going 51 minutes. Let's shut this thing down. There is nothing more damaging to personal relationships or churches than allowing the devil to breed offenses among us. Offenses are the fertile ground that the snake slithers around in, causing snares of strife and division. Until we overcome this, we will never have healthy marriages, families, personal relationships, or churches. Now, I'm going to say the strongest thing I have said in a long time right now. Because somewhere, I don't know how to stop this except with apostolic anointing, apostolic warning. Jesus said it was better to have a meal wheel thrown, put around your neck and have you thrown into the sea than to cause another to stumble through, intentional, through an intentional offense. And when you intentionally hurt another person when you intentionally hinder or cause problems in a church by spreading your oh I almost said something I shouldn't have <laughs> I'm warning you now in the spirit be careful because you could literally ruin the rest of your ministry, life, and career because of offending that which God has His hand on to the point you do it damage that it cannot continue. This is serious. This mamby-pamby stuff coming around here. <sighs> Folks, the Lord started this thing off just a little white lie in the beginning, 